Thank you, Mr. Crosby. Uh, uh, about a month ago, we uh, approved the uh, publishing of an RFP with a uh, request for proposal for construction management services for the high school project. Uh, the uh, RFP was advertised, and we did receive uh, 12 uh, proposals back. Uh, through administrative review, we've narrowed that down to five. All five firms will be here tonight to present. Tonight, we have the first group, which is the Quandell group. Uh, we have Doug Aldinger, John Corey, Frank Murphy, and Larry Ward's president from Quandell. Uh, we do have a, a time limit of 20 minutes that we'd like you to stick to. Well, do we have a Quandell group? We appreciate you inviting us in to uh, talk about your project and give you our qualifications and have a discussion with you. So, uh, uh, there, there's nothing that happens in our office, or a few things that happen in our office that get that it's more excited than getting to this point of the of the selection process. Because we know when we reach this point, we just have a very limited time and one opportunity to really show you that what we can do to demonstrate our capabilities and they be 100% comfortable in us being able to deliver your project. So we want you at the end of the presentation to be comfortable. So if there's questions in during that, if you may have, feel free to ask them, and we will address your questions accordingly. Um, we're going to demonstrate with this, with this, with, with this team that we have the attitudes and the ability to bring your project to a successful completion. And while while some may be able to say that uh, that uh, they're they're uh, uh, very responsive to that, there's nothing they can say that they're any closer to you than than. Uh, uh, we're close to you as your architects, and none can say that they're any closer to your architects than we are, because our offices are less than a mile away from uh, EI's office. So uh, if, there's a, if there's a need for a meeting that we have to have, uh, one of us can deal with the other four steps instantaneously, and of course we are unrestrained by geography, having having uh, teleconferencing capabilities, go to meetings, so you can rest assured that if there's a situation or a solution that we have to avail ourselves, we're ready and with that, that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, John Corn. He's uh, uh, the principal and the uh, project executive. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you for inviting us here tonight and taking the time to allow us to present. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about our approach to your services, our availability of presence, approach to the fee, which I generated, our relevant experience, and some of our lead certification and the rebates uh, program. Okay. Um, again, I'm uh, John Corey. I'm a principal with Quandel. I've been with the company for 24 years. Um, i certified construction manager through the Construction Managers Association of America and a lead accreditor for professional also. Um, our senior manager, Frank Murphy, uh, is here with us also. He's been with Quantum 25 years. He'll be our senior manager overseeing some of the administrative type uh, efforts for, for our team. Uh, and he's incidentally worked with Larry Bortz, who is our proposed on site superintendent uh, person to work with you. He's been in the business, Larry's, for 38 years uh, with Wilson School District and served as the director on the owner's side. For, uh, for a long time, and incidentally, Frank and Larry have worked for 18 years together on multiple projects for Wilson School District. Um, and Doug Aldinger, he's a professional engineer, mechanical engineer, has been in business for 38 years, and he'll handle a lot of the MEP reviews that we do in documents and, and help in that regard. The team we presented here is the team you'll have from the day you hire us all the way through closeout and uh, the one year warranty inspection. So it's not like there's different group of guys who are coming with a presentation with one group and then bring somebody else in. This is your team. Um, and with that, this team, our collectively, we have four, $400 million in K-12 school experience amongst us, uh, $300 million in high school construction, uh, we've done geothermal well projects uh, for, for systems, as well as lead experience on multiple jobs, and extensive Ber Berks County experience. Incidentally, Larry does live in Berks County. Uh, so that's a, as far as uh, the approach to the fee, again, I said I mentioned I developed the fee and put it together, and it's in the last section, I believe, of your proposal book, and it's it's based on my interpretation of the RFP, uh, as, as I understood it. <clears throat> we got 
extensive resources as a company in-house to bring you the table to deal with any issue that can come up on your construction project. Uh, so we've got the in-house expertise with scheduling and budgeting and phasing, constructability reviews, um, all through pre-construction, construction, and ultimately closeout. And we look to be big your project successful, we believe strongly in a collaborative approach where we're working closely with for you as the district. When we need your input, we work closely with the EI. When we need their input, their consultants and engineers. And then the trade contractors when they come on board. So it's a collective effort in order to make the program a success. Um, and because with that, I want to I want to mention that every project, every construction project, has its challenges. And I believe that we've put together what I feel is the best team to help your district overcome any challenges that will be presented to it during this construction program. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Frank Murphy and Larry Bortz to have them discuss um, a little bit more about our relevant experience, which is the next board, uh, incidentally, um, and talk about controlling costs and scheduling and phasing and, and how we've achieved some proven results. Uh, and at the end, I'll step up and talk. John, we actually have one more board before they get that Thanks, Tony. That is Frank. You want to you want to go on to the next the next board meeting? You want to go on to actually you hit the next one? Uh, what what did we tell you? Hit that one. And we're gonna we're gonna stay sitting here. We have to see a few things. Do you have a, a coordinated page in here that corresponds to what's on the screen? Do we that we're holding or on yours? No, 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 you've got no, you've got the proposal. Uh, April less that many of you did not get the opportunity to see to, to see that. Uh, maybe for the benefit of this, maybe and the limited time is if, if uh, we, we dialogue here and then uh, we could refer you back to, to those as, as we work through it. But, uh, okay, yeah, so you don't need to go pages trying to find out where right. you are, you're not going to find it in there. Yeah. The, the right. proposal, the, the information you have in front of you is based on your request for proposal and we put together accordingly. Uh, Thank you. Perhaps this is just our little spiel this way. Yeah. Uh, and part of us, as a group, we have, we have done over $1.4 billion worth of school projects, of which $557 million of that is actually high school projects. Uh, and John mentioned before the $400 million, the $400 million means that the four of us somewhere along the line worked on projects that total $400 million. The other one that, that is kind of nice is we actually have been, as formal as the group, have done three hundred one million dollars worth of, of EI associate project. So we are we are quite familiar with with the EI uh, and their operations, and uh, they likewise uh, know how we operate. Uh, and if you flip to the next one, uh, we're trying to give you a little overview of what we try to do along the way. And controlling costs is always one of the items that you feel the districts are. Concerned with also because you have taxpayers that are also interested that way. Uh, and during pre construction, one of the things we try to do uh, is look at a couple of things. Constructability would be where we actually look at the drawings, the specifications, make sure that we actually try and find out uh, if there's issues on the drawings, if there's issues that can be taken care of. It's a whole lot better for us to look at them, talk with the architect, get those things corrected before the evacuate go out to bid, because then it's a change order. If we catch them before, it's a matter of changing the the drawings and specifications, anyway, being able to, to save some costs for the district for the taxpayers. Uh, one of your items that you have us looking at is, is the, your estimate review. You already have a budget together. Uh, we will also look at it to make sure that, that the project is being designed accordingly, that we can end up making sure that we're not going over budget. Uh, trying to conserve a lot of times and through the estimating, we look and find things along the way. Give me an example one of the projects we did with, with Larry and Wilson. Uh, our estimators have the uh, borings for the, the site. Uh, Berks County is known for its wonderful amounts of rock under the ground. Uh, looked at way back, we're able to actually raise one of uh, Wilson's fields uh, by about eight or ten twelve feet. Saved about five hundred thousand dollars by not lowering it to where the original design was. Uh, the field still functions where it's supposed to be, but it's five hundred thousand dollars that didn't need to be spent to have that rock removed to be able to put a field in. Those are the kinds of things that we look at. Uh, value engineering, other items. Uh, we can find things along the way that maybe uh, a different type of construction uh, be changed before it goes out to bid. 
that made it to the crossing, giving the same value for your dollar, but a little bit of crossing. Uh, the other kind of engine was a huge right reconstruction, uh, in conjunction with the architect. Uh, As Frank talks about constructability, uh, my experience, 30 years on the Wilson School District, and my experience with construction and with Wombo is that I actually initiated the architect's interview through the whole process. I sort of did some of the things that they does all the way through the construction process. I was involved in, in all of those aspects. Uh, I oversaw the Whitfield Elementary School renovation uh, addition project myself, six classrooms at the high school, did a lot of those things in-house myself. And it's, it's interesting as how you're going through the plans, and it's a lot of communication with the architect and the engineer and the things that we picked up. Uh, we did the elementary school, uh, Green Valley Elementary School. We went through 35 pages of documents and found 35 pages of the questions, not the mistakes, questions that we had, where we did some changes and made some savings by making those changes. Uh, Frank and I have, as John said, 18 years of working together. It's interesting in how we sort of think alike uh, as we're going through. I mean, we're going to finish sentences and ideas. So that, that may happen a lot of times. We're not in, in fact, with, uh, we have three, uh, four classroom additions that I'm overseeing for the district right now, where some questions came up today with the constructability of it's a minor thing. But some of the things that you pick up save you money. And, and my philosophy has always been, wherever we can save here gives the educators the opportunity to do something with the students over here. Because after all, that's what it's all about. It's about the education of the students. Safety of the students and the education of the students has to be the priority. Nothing else is more important. Thank you. And then flip the next slide up, because that leads right in, into uh, the schedule of phasing, which is extremely important. I actually will jump, jump down to the bottom a little bullet there, uh, the good communication. Because putting a schedule together for the phasing of the project, it's your project, it's your school. You need to make sure, without a doubt, that the school, the students, and the faculty are safe. But at the same time, it also has to continue. Your, your educational uh, process needs to continue. What that means is it's not a decision that's going to be made, put together by Quandle, by the architect, the contractors. It actually has to be a project with all of your staff uh, to be able to sit down. Make sure that you have everything that you need to be able to keep your system running. Uh, if you look at the drawing there or the drawing over there, uh, this project has quite a few additions to your existing building, which means there's going to be disrupt disruptions throughout the entire building as things are going on. Uh, we did one at, at the senior high school at, at Wilson where we end up having to make sure that the ingress of the students is important. Uh, you need to make sure that they can get out of the building safely. You need to make sure that they can get from one area to another. Their, their normal path to get from one class to another is, is going to change drastically, and it needs to make sure that they are aware of it. We actually have meetings with the entire student body, sat down with them, planned where they were going to go. We went so far when the, one of the areas got uh, taken care of, they actually put footsteps on the, on the floors to be able to have the students know how they relate to the cafeteria. Because the way they used to get to the cafeteria is no longer possible for them. Uh, another issue that, that is a concern is when you have these kind of systems, your fire alarm system. All of a sudden it, it becomes new in a new area. Uh, we actually had the fire marshal come in and ring the fire alarm because there were two different systems, two different bells going on at the same time. You need to make sure that the kids have the way to get out, understand the two bells are going off, doesn't matter what they sound like. Get out of the building, kids. Uh, covered walkways. They're the kind of things that, that you need to make sure are in place so that you have a smooth operation. Uh, Larry and I used to do well, we had one that did Conrad White or the, the uh, Central Dolphin, not Central Dolphin, Central Junior High. Uh, you sit down and plan all these things to make sure that the, the, the mechanical, electrical portions can take place. Uh, and we were going along just fine. All of a sudden, we realized that we had some issues with the kitchen. You know, and then you sit down and, and also get everybody together, students, staff, uh, student representatives, usually staff, uh, your contractors, make sure to sit down, come up with a plan to be able to get around that noise. We're not going to finish a project without having some kind of issue. But you need to be able to have open communication, make sure everybody in the district, students, staff, faculty, 
all understand what they're talking about. <coughs> In our phasing experience. Can I ask a question? Sure. Just to clarify something. MEP system. What does that mean? Uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Uh, okay. Okay. So one of those things that, that sort of has to happen if you end up changing. Okay. I just okay. What MEP meant? Yeah. No, that's, our, our apologies. We we. We're so, we're so used to that. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just it's, you know VCT vinyl uh, trial. Uh, we do those things that we do day to day. That's one of the important things really, because a lot of times you'll end up with an electrical room being moved. Well, that service has to be either maintained uh, so that you can continue operation throughout the whole building. If you can't get that to happen, you need to change your phasing. They're the kind of things that, that in cooperation with the architect, with their mechanical, electrical, and plumbing consultants, make sure that the phasing plan that we put together for everybody works with all those systems. And the important the, the, the significance of that, uh, on one hand, you're you're, you're planning to get a geothermal system, which is which means that you're going to de detach it from the original build, building our, our systems in a sense. So that's a benefit, but by the same token, with all the additions, you can't necessarily disconnect this building and bring down the, uh, this section of the building and take out the heating and cooling abilities or electrical capabilities. Uh, you have to you have to dovetail all of those activities together. So you're bringing so you're removing. The existing systems as you're bringing on the new systems and, and, and working that thing together. That's right. And if you're in the next slide, you start talking about geothermal. Uh, that this, this project is, is geothermal. You sort of went right into that. Uh, and actually, uh, Larry has uh, with Wilson, they put up two schools with geothermal systems. Uh, I was a project manager for both of those, and we just, I just finished one at Time Advisor, also geothermal. So we're well familiar with. How that system has to get put into the ground uh, and get up in operation. Uh, and then, as far as grants and everything else, I'll turn that back over yeah. uh, to you. Uh, just before we get off the lead, lead projects, uh, everyone, to Frank's point, everyone across this table has experience in, in lead projects, and we currently have some lead projects. One of our more recent uh, lead projects was, that was configured with EI is just down the street. That's uh, I'm going to elementary school, Exeter Township, a, a new building, and, and uh, I believe Mark Deggett Gold certified. So, so we do have that experience, and uh, it was a very, very good project. As far as uh, in, in talking with Dave a little bit uh, and looking through the uh, request for proposal, we know and understand that you're you're looking for uh, into a, an ACES grant. Uh, that's an alternative clean energy grant. We have experience and support of those applications. We uh, uh, we, we helped uh, a client get an ASIN grant on, on one of our projects. Uh, and uh, and and as far as other areas that you might look to to gain some some additional monies, uh, many of you are could be familiar with the Act 129 the utility company rebates. You might uh, recognize that from doing a project or doing something in your own home. That project is that that those rebates are available to utility companies, and just recently, uh, the PUC and the utility companies have come together. They the, the, the utility companies submitted their new phase two plans, and uh, they've just been released uh, earlier. Uh, can't say really say earlier this month, late in March. So now that's uh, that's dependent on what those will be. That's Lighting improvement, typically a lot of the most common are lighting efficiency improvements. There, there may be some opportunity, and this is under a special grant for the, uh, or under a special section for the uh, rebates by going from uh, a central system to the geothermal system. Uh, we did, we have, uh, we got uh, the Little League uh, International, Little League Museum on their project, we got them thousands of dollars through the Act 129 to pay one rebate. So we're positioned, in, and depending on the, the length of the, the phase two, which I believe is a three-year grant, we should we should be able to file for that under this and give you an opportunity to gather those rebates. Next slide. Thank you. Um, proven results. Um, repeat clients. Seventy percent of our business as a company, agency CM as well as GC work that we do, general contract. 70% of our business comes from repeat clients. In Berks County, we have listed a few of the projects there with repeat clients. Wilson School District, obviously, Acres, Fondle, and Larry has a few others without us. Uh, 
Berks County, working there on a six project with, both with them uh, in, in the prison and uh, facilities. The uh, Conrad Weiser School District will be using the buyer for their third project. So the three clients is important to us. And the way we get that is we, we, we earn their trust. We earn the tr clients' trust and confidence. They know that we're going to do things the right way in all circumstances. Kind of what we buy ourselves on. And uh, the next board is, is really our promise to you. Uh, again, we, we strive to be clear and have clarity in our communications and dealings with people. We're open, openness. Uh, we stress honesty um, and, 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 and achieving results. Uh, we're accountable to you as our, as our, as our district is. So, so we're working for, we're accountable to you guys and everything we do. And um, it's, it's that promise is what our clients are, are looking for, and it's what we can deliver. So, with that, we're going to be able to bring your work for you. From anybody? Yes. Um, he confused me a little bit. You said Mary did one with Ashley. Does work for you? What is his status? He will work for us. Yeah, he's, he's our consultant. He's freelance. Yeah, but, uh, oh, he, he, he was working so with the district. So he does this project, he'll work here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if he doesn't, that's his project. If you don't get well, this project. he's still working with books, and then he's still on. He'll work for so us. That's when he arises. How many bodies do you have? <laughs> People are not here. Yeah, I was talking about him. He's working. Right. I'll let Larry answer that. Explain how you'll do that. Well, I just. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, our projects at Wilson will wrap up at uh, the beginning of September. Currently, we are doing three, four classroom additions. We are doing a $7.3 million uh, athletic campus renovation. And we're doing a $400,000 restroom and storage facility. I should say, I'm doing a $400,000 restroom. All of those projects should wrap up right around the beginning of September. And I'm interested in all of those projects. So then you'd be free to come here. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't yeah. come here, are you going to be work, working for the. I, I'm confused. Are you yeah. like yeah. just yeah. freelance and they pick you up when they need you? or? I just retired. <laughs> <from the agents. laughs> this, is, this was a new opportunity. Yeah. And, and, and because of Larry's situation and the timing of the yeah. completion of his projects, it was. We thought this was. You know, okay, that'd be great. But if you don't get the job, won't well, you get a job? Depends what other. Yeah. 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 I guess. Actually, the answer is yes. No, I meant with them. Well, that am I going to see another company come in and sell me you? I'm not going to go there. <laughs> yes. Uh, I see that your construction cost grade is much lower than the others. Uh, are you on site 100% of the time? Yes, yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. I thought for senior, mostly local employees. Are you only six employees, that's correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't mean that they're local, but you know that. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. So during construction, how many people do, would you expect to have on site? One, it would be lab. Okay. And can you talk a little bit about um, change orders? I see in your similar projects, they vary quite a bit. Yeah, change orders do, and do vary on every job. Um, our experience generally is, is well, we're involved real early, uh, schematic design, working with the teams. Uh, our change order average history, and we had a board that we ended up, we, we didn't bring it. Uh, to, to share, on the last 18 projects we've done, um, our average change order total was like 0.91 percent. That covers uh, new construction and renovations and additions. In the renovation and addition portions, it's about 1. Point, I want to say 6, 1.7 percent um, change order, so, uh, which is pretty good because the industry norm is four, at least three or four. I think is what PDE requires your budget. So we've been pretty successful in that regard, keeping change orders down to a minimum. One of the major projects that are a little bit tougher, you all sort of have a wall or something else, and you end up with finding something that nobody realized was there. So they, they do tend to run a little bit higher uh, than renovation projects, but... Uh, we try to assess, I'm mean, looking with the designers, we try to assess what's the risk going to be on these jobs. And a lot of times, you'll, you'll look at the risk, and if the risk is, say, floor patching, 
you'll try to build into the job a certain quantity allowance of floor patching with a unit cost so that it goes more or less, you use the unit price to adjust. And, and you try and see what those risks are and build those into the job right up front. And that, that minimizes the impact. Thank you. Any other questions? Great. Thank you. I have a couple of, wait. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't raise your hand. You say you worked as a team. Yes. Uh, how many projects do you take on in a year? Well, that, that varies, a company that varies significantly. Uh, well, if you work as a team, what, what does your team take on? Well, we're, well, we're referring to the team, the team this for this project, for this, for this project. Right. So, so this team would stay together all the way through. Uh, I'll work with John, I work with John, with John several on several projects. projects. Uh, if there's a, a, a heavy dose of uh, mechanical electrical stuff, I'll work with that one. Uh, we're yeah. presently doing PSCCU, uh, the, the headquarters for PSCCU. So we have a lot of, of input on that as far as the mechanical electrical. Well, for example, so you will have only one project going on. Yes. So yes. One. yes. 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 This is right. strictly dedicated. Based on your, your request for proposal, yeah, you, you, want, you, want to, you, you want a guy on site. That would be him. Uh, I, I had a question about the Owatin school. You, you did bid on that, and you didn't get that. That well, was not it. We were, we were the uh, construction, construction manager. manager. Just like we were doing here. We were construction manager. Okay. And you had you had the lot of school. So. All right. Uh, tell me about 38 years at Wilson. You were an employee of Wilson? Is that what you're telling me? I was the I was going to say, I hope it wasn't a project that's 38 years. <laughs> 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 Actually, we started with uh, Spring Ridge Elementary School in 94, and I believe in my 22 years of being a facilities director, I think we had two years where we didn't have a construction project on the And that, that would have been something. We had to be a roof replacement. So we built um, our but he, he's a, he was the facilities director, so he was in charge of. Of transportation of uh, no. so, okay, all right. My response, but that, that answers my question oh, about the whole operation. Now, uh, the last question rebates you talked about rebates, uh, the green rebates, or what isn't that duplicated by our engineering uh, EI is doing? I, I don't know the full extent. Or, uh, is are, are you guys going to help them get? I mean, uh, typically, EI has always been responsive and helpful. I mean, we've already submitted for the. But, but this is not the ACE grant. This is this would be the Act 129. Uh, you have to you, you, that you cannot do. You, you, well, he, in fairness to them, he wouldn't have known when he was selected because because there was quandary with the PUC as to whether they were even going to continue the program. They're getting a lot of pushback from the utility company. The utility companies didn't necessarily were not necessarily supportive of renewing this program, but. Uh, but other other influences weighed out, and so the so the act the, the PUC initiated putting in phase two for the Act 129. Uh, PSECU, the, the uh, Pennsylvania State Employees Credit Union, the one that, that uh, Frank mentioned, that's another one where we'll be actively going after some some rebates. But we didn't know until we approved phase two. So so we will be pursuing that. Okay, thank you. Another question? Is that? Uh, Cost a lot to file for those grants. Only our time. Nothing. When I say so, I mean it's that we're we're telling you we're it's part of what we're offering to you. The Wilson West so Middle School, I applied for I applied for uh, grants for the PPNL for the geothermal system that we installed, and we received one hundred twenty-six thousand dollars rebate for that. I applied twice for our lighting system. The first time that it was submitted, they rejected it. Um, their engineers couldn't find the information in the submittal that was sent to them. I spent six hours going through everything and resubmitted it, and then we received twenty-three thousand dollars in rebate for our lighting system. So, so you're talking a little, you're talking a little bit of a chunk of change. You know, you're right. yeah. Yeah. You don't have to keep separate records for all that. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. Sure. When you see separate records, like an audit and all that. Like what? what? Like have an audit and all that. Like oh no. The, 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 the documentation from the, documentation from the, from the contract that we got for those models. Okay, well, thanks for your time. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
go up to the county and get awards you guys for next time. So we can start. <laughs> <laughs> oh.